Hey y'all, I'm putting this beginning of the video where I'm about to show y'all just a little while ago down there on the other property 20 miles away shooting that uh, 41 six and a half inch Blackhawk with a scope on it. For the first time, I didn't realize that I had the, uh, the little focal piece there on the on this end of it loose and and as I was shooting my groups were getting worse and I thought, you know, I'm having a harder time seeing that target and yeah, it was completely out of focus and the crosshairs were out of focus. I came home, uh, shot a group at 35 yards. Uh, it's this one here on the right. That is, uh, you know, my hand for comparison. You know, you get the idea. That's a lot better. I can live with that compared to the other. And I'm going to, and this ain't from that. This is from some different, shooting a different gun the other day. But uh, I can work with that and I can get better with that. You know, I haven't even, uh, haven't even took, took, take the time, took the time yet with that gun to check the chamber throats, see, you know, the cylinder throats to see how they uh, fit my cash bullets. But anyway, I think there's a lot of potential in that gun. But anyway, here's the video. Enough excuses. Hello again, everybody. It's Plyboy, Plyboy's Ghost Channel. As promised, I am going to put the first rounds through the uh, six and a half inch Blackhawk 41 Magnum on camera for y'all. I'm going to attempt to get a steady enough uh, rest here. You see a liberal use of uh, masking tape on this cheap pistol. Y'all, I'm doing this just to get out of the house and try to get something done. It's not well thought out. There's no scientific can, you know, quality controlled environmental conditions going on here. You know, this is just one step above laying it on beer cans and shooting it. So anyway, let's see what the heck I can do. And I expect that along the way, I, like I said, I didn't even, this has not been bore sighted. It's going to be way off. I expect that I'm going to have to make some real adjustments and I'll cut y'all in and out, try to minimize the, the dead time and the bull crap. Let's see what happens. Well, I've got to go down there and look at it. And I'm just set up at 25 yards, but that's over there almost in the shade. Let me see how close I am. I'll be right back. Yeah, just in case y'all didn't catch on this pretty quick. Here, let me give me a little bit of a re-angle. Y'all just bear with me a second. You know I'm an amateur. I'm going to have to move it pretty good to the right. It's probably about five inches left, something like that. So let's see if I can see what I'm doing here. Yep, I'm just going to guess at it a little bit. Put another one in there. I'm not going to waste a bunch. I'm not going to sit and shoot three shot groups when I'm that far off. I ain't, I ain't wasting that much ammo, that much powder primer. When I get it close, and we'll start with groups. Well, y'all, that was actually a bullseye, so maybe just a touch low and right. Let me see what I can do. And now, now I'm going to put a, uh, try to group it and see what happens. Let's put about two more rounds through it and see how it goes. Be right back. Well, y'all, I've got a uh, kind of a large circle for, you know, I just drew it on with a Sharpie for my bullseye. Uh, those last two shots were, one of them just elongated the first, or the, the hole that hit the bullseye on the second shot. And the next one is in the bullseye just that far off. 
I believe I need to move it about one click left and see how that goes. Y'all, this may be a real short side end. I didn't bring my um, my steel plate down here to to ring anything out for y'all. Let's see. I moved that one click left. I'm just gonna take it one click at a time. Let's try that and see what happens. I know it's kind of boring to see me shoot a little bit. You know, hold y'all off, go down there and check it, come back. I'll try to make it more interesting here in a minute. Let me go look at that. Well, I believe what I'm going to do is go one more click left. I may have overcompensated that first time. One more click left. Now I'm going to take these shades off so maybe I can see the crosshairs just a little clearer. I'm trying to do this with a minimum of shots fired. All right, I'm going to put a few more rounds through it. I'm, I lowered it just a hair. Trying to compensate for a few changes here. Let's see. Y'all, that is so much better shooting than a 44 Magnum. And, I mean, it's actually comfortable. My initial impression is that this gun is going to be more accurate. I'm going to try a different bullseye now and see what's going on. I believe I pulled that one a little low and left. All right, well, after going down there and looking at that, um, I believe that this is gonna be a good zero for 25 yards. I'm gonna put a few more through it and see if I can hold steady enough to, uh, this is not an ideal situation. You know, I'm not, I'm not right with this. I mean, this is pretty stable, but it's not turned perfectly square. To the, you know, I got all kind of excuses. Y'all just stay tuned. I'll even make up some more. But I'm not really, this is not ideal. I could probably do better if I was sitting down, but all I care about is that the bullet goes where the crosshairs are. And, you know, I kind of want to see just how many of the bullets will go where the crosshairs are. There's going to be some human factor in this where I'm going to yank one way out the hell out the under, but you know you don't know you can't do it get better until you do it a lot so that's that's what I'm doing trying to get a little better after after I figure the guns fairly sighted I'm gonna try to make these pretty steady so it might be a little boring to watch I know I pulled that one. It's just like a basketball when you let go of it sometimes. You know just as soon as you let go of it, it ain't gonna hit. It ain't you ain't going in the net in the rim, so I'm calling a couple of these as misses before I even go down there and looking. I 
And I ain't counting. Let's say if I flinch or if I shoot. I flinched some. Woohoo! And I knew it was coming. Y'all stay tuned. Let me go see if this is something I want to show y'all or not. Well, it's not great. But you know, I've done a, I did worse um, a couple of times there. Uh, shoot early on shooting with that 44 Red Hawk that I scoped. And I'm going to show it to y'all here in a minute. I'm going to put a few more through it and just risk it looking even worse. But I'm going to try to get steady enough and work out my little flinch and whatever. It's not really flinch so much as it is probably target panic. I'm going to try to work it out. And um, by the way, this load that I'm shooting through it is, of course, a hand load of mine. Reach down here in the bucket I got on the tar. That is a Noe bullet. That bullet's out of a Noe bullet mold. It's a Keith. It's a Keith bullet. It's a clone of an H and G number 258. It weighs out about 230 grains out of my lid, which is mostly what the hell ever. I don't even know what I was in it. I, all I know is it's pretty dang hard using the pencil test. It's really hard lead. So this could be better. But hey, you ain't dealing with a professional. You're dealing with me. And I know when I let go of some of these, like I said, that they're not dead on. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to check to see how bad it looks this time. I may have just made it even worse. But I'm on... Uh, Unhook y'all from that there tripod. Take you with me and see what the hell happens. Let's lay that right there. Got liberal use of tape. I just stepped it out at 25 yards, 25 long paces. I ain't got a Sasquatch stride, but oh well. I'll point out a couple of my excuses to you here. I definitely knew that I'd pull that one. And there was one or two of these in here that I knew I pulled too. But y'all, that ain't really all that great. And I know that I'm pulling off to the right some. Some of that's me. I believe the scope is doing what it is here and I believe I can live with that you know down here you've got you know my first shot before I'd ever fired the gun and the scope was definitely not gonna be right and then uh, you know you can see the subsequent shots where well, I think that one was doing okay y'all I can do something with this I don't know maybe I need to bring it I don't think really, I might need to bring that left. As many of them as there is clustered on the right there, I'm not 100% sure. I do know this, you know, that's, you know, that's really, that's probably honestly about 28 yards, 28, 30 yards. Because when I first stepped it off, I thought that I had it about 30 and I moved the truck just a hair closer. But then I actually, I've backed up a little and shooting off of the toolbox instead of the tailgate. So... I probably added just a little. So let's say that's about 28, 30 yards. That is by far better than what the deer I shot with got with that iron sided anaconda. Cause y'all I'm here to tell you, I did not hit her where I was aiming. I didn't hit anywhere close to where I was aiming. I was lucky to kill the deer. And with what I just showed y'all, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to take that shot. And I promise you this, I am going to shoot that a lot more. I'm gonna get better with it. You know, I haven't checked those chamber throats on the uh, six and a half inch yet, like I did this uh, 
four and five eighths. So I don't know how good they are. I ain't checked to see how my cast bullet fits down them just yet. So there's your, there's my initial shoot with a cold gun never shot with a brand new scope that had never been on a fired gun to my knowledge, brand new scope. So that's what I got for you. And I promise you this, this is the beginning of April. Uh, by the time mid-November rolls around, I will definitely get more, uh, get better with a scope with that gun and more use to that scope so i hey listen y'all i really appreciate y'all watching wait a minute let me put on my cool shades fishing shades yeah whatever they are i really appreciate y'all watching and welcome once again back down here to our spot that we bought using it for something <laughs> glad y'all were with me talk to you later